And I can whine, I can cry, and I can say, look, when MSNBC reveals the deep state, it's cool. But when I do it, I'm a fool. I'm spinning it. This is the reason why Alex Jones got into trouble, because you're just saying foolish stuff. It's right there, guys, and, and it's been around for a long time. It was, the, it was there with the Bush administration. It was there during the Obama administration. It was there during the Trump administration. It's been there ever since. There, there is an intelligence operation within our government that doesn't answer to the people. They don't even answer to the president. They're running the show from the background. And it's been and and it was just admitted on on TV, and it was admitted in the mainstream media, and still people are pissed off about it because they're saying, "Well, they did it because Trump was doing illegal activity." <laughs> no, that's not why they did it, and they're not out looking for the constitutional safety of the American people. I can promise you that. Let's go to Philip in Maine. Hey, Philip, you're on Ground Zero. Hi, Clyde. How you doing tonight? Good. First of all, I just want to say that you are a verbal superhero the way you handled Joe. And Joe, Joe's strategy is just like every other Democrat. They make a blanket statement. Uh-huh. They don't back it up with facts. And then when you try to give them counterpoints, they completely ignore the counterpoints and go right into insults. Well, that's what I felt like. I felt like that everything that I was bringing up to him, and I said to him, I said, look, MSNBC said this. I didn't say this. MSNBC said this for the longest time. I've been saying that there's a deep state. I've been saying that there's a shadow government. I've even talked about the project for the new American century. I said that Dick Cheney was a part of the deep state at one time, probably still is. Henry Kissinger is. Few others still are. And this goes all the way back to the initial apparatus that Truman set up after uh, they, they created the NSA and the CIA. And they brought over all these Nazis to be a part of it. We got Dulles in the mix. And we've got the Kennedy assassination that's always been the subject of, of, of deep state conspiracy theory. And now they finally here's, admit it and we're told, oh, but they look after the country. Yeah, well, here's something that I was thinking about and yeah. no one seems to be commenting on. But, you know, January 6th, yeah. after that happened, four Capitol Police officers committed suicide. Yeah. Out of the four, three of them, the method of their suicide as far as I can find, is unknown. Mm -hmm. And the fourth one shot himself on his way to work. None of them left a note. You know, that seems kind of suspicious to me. I mean, the the guy that shot himself on his way, why go through all the trouble of showering, getting dressed, getting into your car, heading to work, and then stopping to commit suicide? I mean, if you got to that point in your life, it's, it's we never understand we yeah we never understand suicide as we observe it and that's one of the problems with suicide and how it's carried out because it can be a great cover for a murder cover-up it's been that way for a long time i mean we're living in the same days it seems like we're living in the same days that the, the kennedy assassination i mean think of all the people that were informants to kennedy they all died mysteriously um you know and think about people who have been part of the what they call arkansas where anyone associated with the Clintons ends up dying. Uh, these are things that go on, and, and this is deep state activity. And we're told that they're doing this to look after people of the United States, that this is something that needs to be done. I mean, uh, there was I can't remember what they called it. There was a TV show called Scandal, where in the TV show there was a group that was a, a black ops group that would carry out things, and the, and the president wouldn't know it. And finally, when he found out about it, he would call in favors for these intelligence ops to go out and do assassinations or murders or accidental deaths or whatever in order to keep the power going, in order to keep the continuity. And that's the whole point of a deep state. They are there for the continuity of government, and that's what they do. They, they, that's, and, and it could be bad. It could be good. It could be, it, it could be for reasons that, uh, that they're not based in morality. There is no morality there. But to say well, that they're they looking have- out for our best interests, that's a little much. I know, but they have these FBI whistleblowers, and from my understanding, and I could be wrong, these are FBI agents. So if you're an FBI agent whistleblower that has information about corruption, yeah, why aren't you just arresting the corrupted agent? You're FBI. Well, it, well, it, it, it says a lot too that when, when you know Joe was saying something, in effect, he says, "Well, Trump uh, was a criminal. He did criminal activity. That's why the deep state was on him all the time." Well, if he did criminal activity, and the deep state knows about it. Then where are the indictments, where are the charges, and why isn't he in jail now? He should be. He should be in jail. If all this stuff sticks, okay, 
he should be in jail. But none of it's sticking. None of it is being applied. None of it is happening. And it aggravates one side of the country. And they don't care anymore. Whatever means necessary to take this guy down, they're going to do it. That's why they were speculating two or three weeks ago that they could shoot him in the streets and we'd have one big parade on one side of the country because of the death of one man. That says a lot about the hate that we have in this country. This is Orwellian hate. This is two minutes of hate. This is Emmanuel Goldstein hate. This is something that if people were uh, literary, if they, if they knew literature, if they knew history, they wouldn't stand for this. Even if they hated Trump, they'd say, well, that, we're getting into territory that's a little jackbooty. It's a little, uh, you know, uh, uncharacteristic of America. It's We're developing a Gestapo here, a Gestapo that you don't know who the Gestapo is, but you need to be afraid of them. And that's the thing that, that bothers me here. The thing that bothers me about this whole situation. Let's quickly go to Dave in Arizona. Hey, Dave, you're on Ground Zero. Hey, Clyde. Uh, so uh, assuming that Joe is uh, on a break at the car wash and is still listening, um, I'd like for him to think about which of these actions that Biden took since he's been president are, quote, constitutional and the best interests of the American people and the republic. Ending the Keystone XL pipeline, ceasing domestic oil, oil production, which has jacked gas prices up across the country, a billion dollars plus, because I'm sure a billion dollars is a low number, of weapons that were left in Afghanistan, plus an unknown number of Americans who have to fend for themselves, $10 billion given to Ukraine while our economy is in the shambles. And, oh, by the way, let's not forget the school loans that are going to be uh, cost the American taxpayer 300 to $500 billion over the next 10 years, and that may be illegal uh, as well. No baby formula, mandating a vaccine for uh, people when he said that he wouldn't, the cost of food and general products going through the roof because of inflation and supply chain uh, issues, thanks to the lockdowns that he uh, enforced, our economy being in, in recession, 87,000 armed IRS agents who are going to make sure that the government has the revenue that they need to enforce the Inflationary uh, Reduction Act. And last but not least, Biden and his son being compromised by his son's the smartest guy that he knows, laptop, that the FBI said they weren't going to look at because they weren't going to influence an election again. And now we know it's all coming out. So please, Joe, you know, throw a few more quarters in the, in the jukebox or get on your uh, track phone and call in and say which of those is constitutional. I agree. And, and how much of that is the deep state allowing to go down? How much of that is the deep state just letting go? And that's the thing is that when, we're oh, wepo- when we weaponize intelligence agencies where the accusation has been made and it's dismissed as conspiracy theory, we find ourselves back in Kennedy times when you weaponize Absolutely. a certain group of people Absolutely. to go out, hunt down a president, shoot him in Dallas. This is what we have. This is what we have again. Yeah. And you know what, Clyde? I've, I've got to book a room at the Holiday Inn Express because I'm dumber for having listened to Joe. <laughs> Dave, thank you. Appreciate the call. Yeah, I, I, I just I, I don't understand. I I wish I did. There is no spin. I'm giving it the way they reported it and how it how it sounded to me. You may think differently because you hate Donald Trump. Fine, hate Donald Trump. I mean, I don't like everything Donald Trump did either. But I'm not going to allow my government to organize a Gestapo to continue to take over and make orders for the president. I mean, they're in charge now, obviously, and, and Biden is allowing them to be. So who really is running the show? If it's the deep state, then damn it, admit it's the deep state. But they won't. They'll just kind of subtly talk about it here. The ideology will creep in there. And eventually we'll all realize that not everything is how we see it in a democracy.